Hello, early learners, and welcome back to the art room. This week we've been studying the book Painting Pipette, and it's about a little rabbit who needs a portrait. So let's do a good morning song and get started on today's art. Ready? Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello to you, hello to you, hello to you, hello to me. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Alrighty, so we're going to look through the book Painting Pipette, and here is Pipette ready to hear the story, and we'll read the first three days that we've already met Pablo Picasso, the Cubist painter. We met Salvador Dali, who is the surrealist. We met Chagall, who always does the dreamlike pictures that we've studied in the past with floating people, and a goat is often in there, and violins, and upside down people. And today we're going to meet Henri Matisse. Now, we know about Matisse because we studied his paintings. He started out being a landscaped artist, and then he went into painting things with really bright colors, and he became one of the wild beasts known as the Fauves. And then he became crippled, and he had to be in a wheelchair, and in his bed he was starting to do cut paper, and he called it drawing with scissors. So let's take a look at our book and see how Matisse might paint a picture of Pipette. And here's our story, Painting Pipette. It was written by Linda Raven Lotting, illustrated by Claire Fletcher. And we see the portraits around on the cover. And here are portraits of Josette and her family and Pipette. Here's her father and mother. I don't know why they never talk about the father of having his portrait. But here's Picasso we met on Monday, Mr. Dali, who was, we met on Tuesday. We met Marc Chagall on Wednesday. And today is Thursday, and we're going to see Mr. Matisse, Henri Matisse, painting Pepette. You can see Josette is having a tea party with Pepette. They are really good friends. Josette Babette and her rabbit Pepette lived at number nine Rue Lafayette, Paris. Josette adored Pepette and took her everywhere. But their favorite thing to do was to cuddle on the window seat in the Babette's great room. This great room was filled with fine art. There was a portrait of Josette's mother. There were the paintings of Grandmère and Grandpère. There were the paintings of the Petite Babettes, Janet, Juliette, and Josette. There was even a portrait of their schnoodle, Frisette. One day, Josette noticed something strange. There was no portrait of Pep Hmm. We must find an artist to paint your portrait, said Josette, and it has to be special, just like you. So the two friends set off for Montmartre, where the best artists in Paris painted. Easels filled the square amid the hustle and bustle of people rushing here, there, and everywhere. As soon as they turned the corner, a man in a sailor-striped shirt stopped them. Those ears, he cried. Never have I seen such a majestic ears. I must paint this rabbit's portrait. Josette noticed Pipette blushing. Her ears had never been called majestic before. Magnifique, said Josette. We are looking for an artist. The painter propped open his easel and filled his canvas with not one, but two button noses and three rabbit ears. When he finished, he waved his paintbrush in the air and declared his painting a masterpiece. What do you think, he asked. 
It's nice, said Josette. It's just that Pepette has only one nose and two ears. And Pepette had to agree. Just then, a man with a mustache as wide as a bicycle handlebar strolled by. What a divine creature, he said, twirling the ends of her whiskers. Please, I must paint the very essence of her rabbitness. That man painted a most unusual portrait. You like, he asked the painter, asked the painter, motioning to his canvas. Josette stood back. <clears throat> it's imaginative, she said, trying to find just the right words, but you painted Pepette quite, well, droopy. And Pepette had to agree. Moments later, another painter wandered by. He stopped in his tracks when he spotted Pepette. That nose, like a faint star, twinkling in a misty velvet night. As he bowed to Josette, a shock of black curls flopped over one eye. May I paint your friend? My easel is across the square. Pepette would like that, said Josette. Hmm. Certainly this artist would paint just the right portrait, she thought. Pepette and Josette hopped through the square until they reached the painter's easel. More and more people gathered around and looked on as he painted a rabbit flying through the clouds. When he finished, he admired his painting. Hm, one of my best works. I like the clouds, said Josette, but Pepette doesn't like to fly. She's scared of heights, and Pepette had to agree. That rabbit, said another painter. He peered at Pepette through his round spectacles, and spectacles means glasses. He peered at Pepette through his round spectacles. What a colorful lady. Balloon blue, pansy pink, and radish red. Was he talking about Pepette? wondered Josette. May I have the honor of showing the world her colors? And Josette nodded yes. She was, after all, quite curious. When the painter finished, he wiped his brow, which means his forehead, and revealed his work to Josette. Ta-da! The canvas was filled with splashes and dashes and dots of bright color. Josette considered the painting. Uh, it, it, it's awfully colorful, but mm, Pepette isn't pink. Ah, oh, yes, he said. But through art, we can see the world any way we want. And we will find out just what happens with that painting as we paint our own today. I wanted to show you this book I have called Matisse's Garden. It has a lot of pictures of paintings and cut paper work that Matisse has done. I also wanted you to see on the cover, he has his spectacles, and I told you that spectacles was another word for glasses. I marked the page I wanted to show you. This book is so wonderful because it has lots of different pictures, but they also have it so that you can open it up like this. So it has Matisse inside his house, but look as I open it. 
it shows you some of his cut paper. And this is one where he did a bunch of animals. And I thought, I looked and looked and looked and thought, is there one with a rabbit? But there was not. But I wanted you to see, this is all monochromatic. It has only colors of blue, different shades and tints of blue, and then the white cutouts on top of that. But what we're going to do for our art today is cut out a rabbit and do the background with bright colors. And I'm making my rabbit pink, just like Matisse did in our story, Painting Pepette. Let's get started. You'll get your background paper, your pink paper, any paper scraps. I have my paper scrap box right here next to me, ready to go. And you'll need scissors, glue stick, and if you have any coloring tools to do your background in a burst of color. All right, let's get set up. Let's take a look at Henri Matisse. This was during the years where he was working from his studio most of the time in his bed, and he would cut out things, and his assistants would go and take them to the wall and put them up, and he'd tell them to move them this way, that way, up or down. But you can see he's in his spectacles. Here's the painting I wanted to look at today. The interesting thing about this painting, it's of Matisse's wife, Amélie. And here she is. Look what he's done to her face. He's painted her face green and yellow and red, and she has bright red hair, and there's all different colors on her face. And if you ever want to look up two little girls that are probably 12 years old, paint their faces to look like this, and they interview one another and act like one of them is Amélie and one is Henri Matisse, look it up, a woman in a hat, and see if you can find that. Now, she's got a whole basket of fruit on her head. You can see fruits and vegetables up there. And she's got a shawl. Here's her arm resting on the arm of the chair. And what I thought we could do is when we cut out our rabbit, I'm making mine pink, just like in the book. But look at the background, how he used all these bright co colors like the fauves did. And fauvism is when they are using bright colors that don't naturally happen. Like you don't see a woman whose face that looks like this. But that was the way he was painting during that time. And people saw this painting and thought it was unfinished because it doesn't look like it's the colors they would expect. So they thought, oh, it's not for sale. It's just unfinished. And you can actually see this if you get a chance to go to San Francisco, because that's who has this painting showing right now, is in San Francisco at the Modern Art Museum. And you can see the woman in a hat that Matisse has painted. So take a look at all these colors. Like if you can picture her being a rabbit and then doing the background, this big swath of orange and then green and blue and yellow and some of it gets mixed up together. Over here is some pink and some peach, all different colors all around it. So what I'm going to do is cut out a rabbit, put it on there and then paint the background. Let's take a look at the one that they showed. This still shows Matisse in the picture. You don't get to see much of Pepette, but look how he put Pepette's ears red and it was a pink rabbit. Then he did some shading around it. And I thought when I cut mine out, I might do some shading with my chalk pastels or my oil pastels so you can decide. If Matisse painted Pepette, what would we see? What would we get? Pepette, get. They both say et. Now we're going to get our materials ready and create some art. All right, let me get my table up here. You can get yourself set up. Need my scissors. I brought a little piece of brown construction paper. I think this will be my background, or maybe I think I would rather do it on my light blue. I brought both just in case. I didn't know what I would want to do. Put this up here and get myself a pencil so I can, on the pink paper, draw just like we've been doing in the past. We're going to draw the circle for the head, the ears, get ourselves started so that we can cut it out and add the colors. I wanted to make note that I'm only going to do up to Pepette's half 
because in the picture of the woman with the hat, he showed Amelie just up to her waist. So what I'm going to do is have my pipette looking forward and I will cut him out or her out and then put it on my blue paper. So let's start out with our kind of roundish ovalish head. I'll put my two ears on, which are two curves that meet at the top. I will do the oval. I'll con construct the whole oval, but I'll cut it off at the waist, probably about there. And I'll put Pepette's arms like that. Oh, I made her so chubby. Maybe she's been eating a lot of candy. I'm not going to um, cut it out yet because I like to go near the edge and before I cut it out. I'm going to put her two little beady eyes. I should put her down here as my inspiration. I think I will put her nose. Now, to make a triangle, you put two dots near the eyes and one dot below. Let me show you that. Two dots under where the eyes are and one below that in the middle. And then you just connect those dots, that dot to that dot, that dot to that dot. If you don't know how to make a triangle, that's the easy way to do it. And remember we talked about with the point going down, you go down and make a curve, go down and make a curve. And there is our little bunny mouth. All right, so on my pipette, there is a little pink nose and I think I will use this pastel because it's just a little bit darker. And I know that on Pipette, with the whiskers, I will take it from near the little cheeks and go out. I'm only putting three on each side, you can see. I think that what I'll do is use my red pastel, because he made one of her ears red, and I'm going to go and make mine red, too. And I'll shade that in. Maybe you just, I could just leave the pink paper, but I really like the look of it being colored all the way. And I think I'll make this ear pink. And maybe I'll put a little brown on the outside of that. Let me move my pastels over here so you can see. I'm using my big pastels on this. You might have pastels, but maybe you'll be using just your crayons, which work just fine because I'm drawing this part, but then I'm going to paint my background. Now under the nose is where the little white part goes. And there I can see I have some blue on here. I should have checked it and cleaned it off, but that's okay because you know how Matisse is doing things all different colors. So I think that I'm going to make her have some pink little cheeks and the edge will have some pink also. You could just use the paper, and that is why I got this paper, was because I thought I would use the paper as the background and not do quite as much coloring. Now, I'm going to show you tomorrow a frame that I made, and I'm going to teach you to make a frame just out of some cardboard scraps, because if you don't have gold, paper. That's how I thought it would be fun was to make a gold frame because in the pictures of the living room of the Babettes, um, they had golden frames to put their pictures in. I thought it would be fun to frame one of our rabbits to add it to the wall because you know that's the whole idea that Josette wants a portrait for Pepette to be hanging in their living room. Oh, they call it the great room. Okay, I'm going to put a little brown around the outside of this also. You know yours can be any color. I'm just using these and I'm not even telling you get this color, that, get that color because I really want this to be your own idea. Just being inspired. Oh, maybe I like a little more white on there. Like this rabbit ear has a little white. I think that might look good, or is that yellow? It's hard to tell once we unwrap them. Oh, here, this was one. I need to wipe off the 
edge of my pastel because that is something that happens. They bump into each other and they pick up each other's color. And you can just wipe it off by on your paper surrounding it. I'll put a little white in here just for interest. I like interesting things. And some shading, oh, and some shading on the tummy. Even though my pipette doesn't have a white tummy, I like the look of it. All righty, I'm gonna start cutting now. If you're not ready to cut, don't rush, because you can just pause the video and come back to it. And if you're in school, you just say to your teacher, can you hang on, I need to catch up. And they say, oh, sure, because other people can, if they're finished, they can always look at a book or do some sketches on what they think they'd do a next rabbit. I like to do this. Remember, I've told you, I like to get close to it before I really start cutting it out. It's so much easier. It's not so much paper to hold onto. So I'll get close to my drawing. It's so nice because I got a little out of the lines so I can cut those off. I can get close, but not completely cut it off. Now I made Pipette kind of pinky, which is not like Pipette's real thing, but when I do the background, I'm going to make it very colorful. I just wanted my Pipette to be just a pink one. Because in the painting that Matisse did in the book, the rabbit has lots, I think there was even green on her face. Since I made her so round, I'm gonna make her a little less round. Get up close here, and I think I'll make her a little less round and be able to see her arm a little better. There we go, round and close. Now remember, I cut that out pretty quickly because I am an expert cutter because I've been cutting for many, many years. Because even from the time I was a little girl, I loved art. And when I went to art college, I said, I want to be an art teacher. And so I did all things that let me become an art teacher. OK, I'm going to put Pepette way far away so I don't get any colors or paintings on her. I'm going to put this in the middle so I can paint around. And then I can later decide how I want my background to be and how it will fit into the frame. Now, you know, we only scoot this up a tiny bit. And I really should get off of my paper to do it around the edges and be sure to get some in the middle. But always on the edges and around the whiskers and under her arm and around her body. I need to go on this arm and go up in the middle and a little in the center. I'll go around her whiskers on that one. I think that's enough glue. And I'll center it on my blue paper. I'll show you one of the frames I brought and see if it looks good on here. Oh, a little small. But you can see my big golden frame. I wonder if my square rectangle frame looks better. I might have to make a bigger frame or a smaller picture. It still looks good. See my two frames? They're just made out of cardboard. We'll see how we do that later. All right, I'm ready to start painting my background. So I'm going to bring over my watercolors first and bring them over. Oh, I have so many brushes. I have to shake them off, bring it down here. Earlier, I used my little squeeze bottle and put water in each of these places. And I'm also going to use my pastels, I think. Do I want to use my chalk ones as well? They kind of rub off. Maybe I'll keep these like this. All righty. Now I'm going to get my water, start painting my background. We know that we won't be able to finish this today, boys and girls, but you'll get the idea of what I'm doing. Now, you know with a blue background, the, pick, the paint will be a little different color. I'm going to do some bluish color into the water, get some green. How is yours looking? Are you making your background great? Well, let's take a look. I'll tell you what we need to bring tomorrow. As I finish this up, let me tell you what you will want to bring tomorrow. If you'll bring any kind of paper, any kind of coloring tools, and I will teach you how to make a golden frame. So if you have any cardboard scraps, you can bring those. 
And um, I'm, I bought some golden paint, and I'll tell you about it tomorrow. And that way, if you want to shop for gold paint, I could tell you more about it. So I'll show you this and say thanks for joining me today and learning about Matisse and seeing the woman in a hat. And I will see you tomorrow when we finish up our book, Painting Pipette. Thank you, boys and girls. See you tomorrow.